Welcome to Erase Risk. In this video, we're going to be walking through the main product features. So let's go ahead and get a project started. Select new project, provide our project with a name. Select create project. Once that project's created, we find ourselves directly on the diagramming interface. First, we'll place a trust zone, internet trust zone, place a public cloud. Go ahead and drop some components on here. Maybe an EC2 instance. If we have a firewall. Maybe we've got some web client. We can draw data flows between the two. To demonstrate data flow between two different objects. We can also add data flow labels to those. Maybe that's HTTPS. Maybe we have credit card data being transmitted between two different areas. So showing the data flow and the data flow asset. We can also open up our different components and complete questionnaires about them. Asking what kind of assets being stored, processed, or transmitted. Asking what how's authentication functioning, secret management, data and transit encryption. And you can see it's already answered some of these questions because I provided it with a data flow tag. So, and then we select update our threat model. And by selecting update our threat model, it's gonna go through and run the rules engine. So in the background, it's looking at all of my different components, all of my data flows, my trust zones, and it's going and looking inside of the libraries for contextual information, importing specific risk patterns, importing threats, importing countermeasures, and dropping that on to my threat model. Now that that's been updated, we can go ahead and navigate over to the threats tab. And you can see I can go ahead and auto open all of my different components and use cases. So my component, my different threats attached to each one of these. And you can see it's auto implementing some of these based on rules I have set up inside of my tenant. I can open one of these up. Let's me open it up and drill into details about that threat, details about a weakness that would allow that threat to be realized, my countermeasure that I can use to reduce that. I can open that up from here as well. I can then move that into an implemented status. Select save. And then now that's going to show that particular threat as being fully mitigated. I also have the ability to create uh, issue tracker integrations within JIRA, within ServiceNow, within Azure DevOps. I also have the ability to bulk action several of these if I'd like. So say, for example, maybe these ones are not applicable. Out of scope. And I can remove those from my threat model, which simplifies my view, reduces my noise. I can also go over and look at the countermeasures view, where if I want to go in and take a look at the different countermeasures allocated per component, you can see I've got my priority, my cost implement, and of course I can go into these as well, perform the same actions that I saw over on the threats, but this one's only looking at countermeasures. I can move those into an implemented status, move them into rejected status, select save, right, and updates it from there. Um, another useful feature is the ability to apply standards. Standards let us know, um, so an example, standards let us know which of the specific countermeasures need to be implemented based on some overarching compliance requirement. So in this one, I'm going to apply all recommended, all recommended standards, and that's going to change the state of 24 countermeasures from recommended to required. I'll go ahead and select apply. And you can see now I start to develop a plan for most of my oh, most of my risk reduction. Now, if we go over into countermeasures, you'll see many of these now are no longer in a recommended state. Many of the ones that are applicable are now in a required status. We've got several that are in NA because we marked those threats as NA to reduce our noise. And then if I want, I can go ahead and say, I want to create new issues for all requirements, which is going to send all of these requirements uh, downfield into my, my issue tracker. 
you know, automating that, that process. So uh, if I go over and click on my compliance report, I also have the ability to see uh, which ones are related to uh, different compliance standards. So if I wanted to say uh, PCI DSS 4.0, it'll show me which ones are not applicable. Let's see if we have any that are required on this one, non-compliant. So which, which one should be applicable, but you know, in this instance, we moved them into NA. So again, just a compliance review of our, of our different countermeasures. So we can see how well we are tracking against a particular compliance standard. Uh, and then lastly, we have the ability to create different types of reports. So we've got co current risk summary report, technical threat report, technical countermeasure report, a compliance report, which just show us different views of the same information. We also have the ability, going back to our diagram, maybe we want to simplify you know, an existing diagram. We can grab other projects and we actually have the ability to nest those inside of, of each other. So if we wanted to create a nested threat model, we could create that and then nest it within another threat model. Um, you also have the ability to convert this existing project into a template, which will then allow you to use it as a starting point for any future project. So for example, if, if every single project started with web client, a firewall and an EC2 instance, I could convert this into a template. And then in the future, every single threat model could start with this as an, as an example template.